Hey guys, Motor Car Nut here, and today we're going to be checking the electrical draw, parasitic draw load on the battery from the vehicle's electronics. And what that means is basically you, when your car is off, you want to make sure nothing is on in the car that's not supposed to be, that's killing your battery. And the symptoms of that, is that let's say if your battery goes dead pretty fast, or if you bought a brand new battery and in one or two days or it sits for a little while, it goes bad. Something is draining it. And I'm going to show you how to do that test. You're going to need a multimeter that's capable of reading milliamps. All right. And you're going to have leads with alligator clips. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. Now, when I mean bad, I mean dies. It doesn't crank. You know, the battery is dead. Okay, first thing you're going to do, and you have to know, the newer the car, the more electronics it's going to have, and you're going to have to make a shunt with the, um, with the, uh, alligator clips on the, on the uh, meter. And what I mean by that is before you do this test, uh, let me show you something. All right, let me take it off and explain. Now, okay. Now, normally the test is like this. You put your milliamp red, in the milliamp area, <clears throat> and you put your ground. Ground goes to the terminal on the battery, and the red goes to the uh, the terminal of the ground. Okay, like that. Now, if you look at it, it's showing two milliamps. 200, I'm sorry, 208, 211 milliamps. All right, it should be lower than 100. Normally, a car has between 40 and like an older car maybe have 80 milliamps, but newer cars, even when they when they when they uh they go to sleep, the older computers, it's about 50 or 60. You see, right now this one is showing 200. Now, if that would stay at 200, it'll kill this battery pretty fast. And the reason why is because all the electronics in the cars. Right now, something's still on. It could be the the computer that's on, the body control module, um, the cluster, uh, lights inside the car, standby things that has to sleep. So some cars take take longer than others. It could be an hour. So what does that mean? How do you test it? See, right now, if you would test it the way I just said, it's showing 200. You think you got a problem? Let me open the door and simulate something on. Okay, now you're gonna look. And look at that, it already jumped up, 25. See, now watch, as the systems relax and sleep, it's gonna go lower. Right now it's at 2100. And I'm gonna show you how to avoid all of this by using your multimeter as a shunt. And what a shunt means is just no break in the system when you take off the battery uh, lug. See how it's going down now? Now it's at 12. Some of the systems are shutting off, and then it's going to go back down. It's probably going to go down to 200, and it stays there for a while. It can stay there for, for like I said, it all depends on the car. It could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but sometimes you don't have that time. Okay, so let's assume that's going to jump down. It's going to jump down. So how do you do it? How do you prepare the car? So what you do is, let me shut this off first. Shut all of this off. Okay. Now what you do, the first thing you're going to do is get your uh, negative. I mean, if you have like a ring that you can put here, a thin ring, and then you can attach your negative cable to it, that's even better. But what you do first is you attach your negative, all right? Then you put your negative to the negative post. Then you put the battery negative on top of that, right? Now you tighten this down, okay? And then you put the positive to the negative on the wire right here, the, okay? So now, with this tight, okay, with this tight, you leave it like, oh, you can even leave it overnight, keep the meter off, it doesn't matter, you can unplug it, as long as, no, but keep the meter in series, okay? In other words, don't, don't, don't take uh, any of the... Uh, um, you'll break the shunt, you'll break the uh, continuous voltage, all right? Um, continuous, you know, continuity, I meant. So, now let's assume it's like it's overnight, now you want to test it, right? You put your meter on, all right? And you put it to milliamps, okay? 
and that would be normal. Well, that's a little low, but you know, that'd be normal. Anyway, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen this, keep this on it, don't break the seal, don't break the connection here, and don't break the connection here. And you loosen this back up, right? And then you move it out of the way. Okay? So now it never broke, it never broke it, so the computer, the car didn't wake up. See, it's still at 200 because um, I'm just doing it, I'm, I'm just saying, like that, two, that 200 milliamp is too high. There's something in the computer that has to wait, and I can't wait an hour or so for it to go lower than that. Hope that's clear for you guys. So safe to do it a couple hours, have it hooked up the way I said, okay? You turn your, your, um, your multimeter on, on amps, and you put your red in the uh, milliamp section, you put your ground in the common, okay? And you take it off and you read it, and it should be below 100 milliamps. This is 200 right now because something in the car is still not, still not sleeping, so to speak. Now, let's say you did that, you know that, now you got like four or 500 amps, or even more draw. What you can do, it could be a couple of things. It could be a problem with the uh, instrument cluster in, the, in, in there. It could be a bulb that's shorting out. And what you're going to have to do is step by step pull out fuses. As you pull out, pull out a fuse, you have somebody watch this. All right. And once it goes below where it's supposed to go, then you know that fuse, whatever that fuse, let's say that fuse is the radio. Then you know it's something with the radio circuit. Maybe it's the radio itself. And... And that's how you diagnose the draw. Sometimes it could be time consuming. Sometimes it could be easy. All right. But on the new, on the older cars, you really don't have to use a shunt. You can just hook it up the way it is as if I just did. You take off the uh, negative. You put the positive on the negative, And you put the negative lead on the negative of the battery post. And you put your own milliamps. And then you'll see it's going to be, because uh, those cars really don't, the older cars don't have that many computers. Okay. And like I said, and that's how you that's how you troubleshoot the, the parasitic draw. Parasitic means like it's drawing too much for the battery and killing it. All right, so I hope I cleared that guy up for you guys. Motor car nut, please subscribe if you like the video. I really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Please uh, put any comments down you want pertaining to the video. I answer all my uh, comments when I have the time, and I really appreciate all the feedback. Thank you.